Hey friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. I'm here today with what's probably going to be most likely the last outdoor gardening video before the first frost. So I know in my sweet potato video that I just posted a couple days ago, I said that we hadn't had a frost yet and there wasn't one in the 10 day forecast. Well, now we do have a frost or a potential frost in the 10 day forecast. Tomorrow night, the low is 33. So that's only one degree above freezing. So that's cutting it a little bit too close for me to feel comfortable taking a risk and leaving my last frost sensitive crops out here in the garden. So what we're going to do today is we are going to have the last little harvest before the first frost. Now the temperature is forecasted to get down to 33 degrees. While that is really close to freezing, that is not actually freezing or below freezing. So we may not in fact actually get a frost, but it's cutting it pretty close and I don't want to take that risk. Also, with the number of daylight hours that we have left and the colder weather that we've been having lately, I don't think I'm going to be able to get that much more growth out of my summer crops anyway. So I think we're going to go ahead and harvest everything left that's frost sensitive. Now, I'm hoping there won't be too much wind noise in this video. Fall is kind of one of our windier seasons here in Connecticut and the trees are starting to drop their leaves so we don't have as much of a wind break anymore either. So it is a little windy today. Hopefully you'll still be able to hear me okay. Now, I'm not expecting a big harvest today. It's probably going to be pretty small, honestly, because a lot of my summer crops have kind of already given up. We've already harvested the last from a lot of things. But we wanna go through and get what little we can that's left from this garden season. Now, over here to my right, you can see my beautiful lettuce. This is all frost hardy lettuce. None of this is going to die in the frost. We are going to actually cover this bed with plastic to take just a little bit of extra precaution. So we're not going to be harvesting anything from our fall crops today. What we're going to be focusing on is summer crops that are going to die in the frost. So let's just go through the garden. I'll walk you through what we have left and we'll grab what we can before it's too late. Now we'll start with these tomatoes here. If you'll remember a couple months ago, we planted these tomato plants together to try to get a little bit of a fall harvest. As you can see, the plants are really not doing well. They've kind of started to succumb to disease. They're kind of dying down. So they wouldn't have very much time left anyway, even if a frost weren't coming. Now we've already harvested quite a few tomatoes off of these plants. So while we're probably not getting the full potential that we could harvest from these plants, I'm still gonna say that they were worth planting. It was still a success. But we are going to go ahead and harvest the green tomatoes that are on here. We're gonna pick all of those today. And I think that probably most of them are mature enough that they will ripen in the house. Um, some of them might stay green. We're gonna see what happens. On the chance that some of them do stay green, Go ahead and leave in the comments your favorite way to use green tomatoes. As I said, I'm hoping most of them will ripen, but some of those smaller ones probably won't. So I'd like to come up with a way to use those guys too. Now, any tomato that's starting to blush like this will finish ripening inside. I know this one has a few blemishes on it, so I'm not sure how high quality that will be, but we'll bring it in and see. Now, some of these other ones that are pretty close to full size, but haven't started blushing, I'm guessing some of these will probably ripen as well. There's also some smaller ones up here. These are pretty small. I'm not sure if those will ripen or not. I don't think they're really mature yet, but we'll go ahead and bring everything inside just in case and we'll see what we get. Well, friends, I think I seriously underestimated exactly how many tomatoes I had out here. This isn't even all of them. This is just all I can fit in this bowl. So I think I'm gonna have to go in and get another bowl. I was thinking that this bowl would fit everything that I'm harvesting in the garden, not just my tomatoes, but not quite enough tomatoes. Now I do want to make a note. A lot of these tomatoes have little blemishes and stuff like that. So I'm not anticipating that I'm actually going to get to enjoy all of these. Um, we're gonna try to eat as many as we can, and these may not be in good enough condition for canning. We don't wanna can it anything that has blemishes on it, so probably what I'll end up doing is whatever of these ripen and seem good enough to eat, I'm probably gonna go ahead and roast them and make roasted tomato soup, and then we'll go ahead and freeze that for the winter. But either way, I'm pretty impressed with how many tomatoes we've got. As you can see behind me, there's quite a few left to harvest still. So I'm gonna go in and grab another bowl We'll get the rest of our tomatoes and we'll get the rest of our produce too. Well, friends, here is our sauce tomato harvest. Got a few cherry tomatoes to harvest, but this is gonna be the bulk of our tomato harvest. I gotta say it's more than I was expecting. 
Now I've just got to hope that these tomatoes actually ripen for me and that these blemishes don't make them go bad before we actually get to enjoy them. I'm going to say that these tomatoes are a productive variety. This is um, Martino's Roma. So we'll see how they do ripening inside. Now most of our cucumbers succumbed a long time ago, but we've got this one silver slicer plant that's still putting out cucumbers. So I'm just going to grab these last couple cucumbers and then we'll have a little summer treat to enjoy in the fall. So the main other thing that I want to make sure that we harvest today before the first frost is peppers. Now I didn't have a really successful pepper year, but we do have a few peppers out in the garden and I want to make sure that we get all the ones that we actually were able to grow before the first frost. So over here to my right, I've got some peppers. I've got some peppers in one other bed in my garden and I've got a bunch of peppers on my deck. So we're just going to go around and harvest all of those and we'll see how much we get. Now I've got a handful of these shishito peppers left. I really liked these this year. They actually, peppers were not that successful in my garden, but shishitos did better than pretty much any other pepper that I grew. Um, shishitos and jalapenos probably were the only ones that really gave me anything worth harvesting. These are really good, just kind of seared in a skillet and with a garlic aioli sauce. I know that's kind of the classic way to eat these and they are really delicious that way. I probably have enough to make maybe one more side dish of these shishitos this year. This one's a little bit small, but since frost is coming, we'll go ahead and harvest that too. Oh no, somebody else harvested this one before I did. So unfortunately we won't get that one. Now these little habanadas here, this is basically a heatless habanero. These got off to a really slow start this year and I didn't think I was going to get any. Now these are just starting to finally ripen. And wow, you can hear one of my chickens in the background. She really wants my attention. My chickens like to follow me around when they know I'm in the garden because sometimes they get little garden treats. So they're all hanging out right on the other side of the garden fence over there, hoping that I find something to give them. Actually, you know what? Let's give them those shishitos that had the bug holes in them. See if they like those. There they are, right on the other side of the fence. Florence, you want one? All right, so back to these habanadas here. I'm really torn. Should I just leave these and cover them and hope that we don't get a frost so that they fully ripen? Or should I bring them in and just be sure of getting something but not getting, I don't know, what do you think? Do peppers continue ripening inside the way tomatoes do or do they have to actually ripen on the plant? Do you guys know? I'm not 100% sure of that. So over here, kind of behind me and to the left of me, I've got some more peppers. Mostly jalapenos over here. I think a few more shishitos as well. Maybe a bell pepper or two. We'll kind of look through the garden and see what we can find. And then we'll head up to the deck and we'll see what we've got up there. So these peppers out here in the garden are a kind of jalapeno called jalafuegos. This is one of our favorite kinds to grow every year. They get definitely spicier than the other jalapenos that we grow. So I'm going to try to keep these separate from the, from the other variety we have, which is early jalapeno. You know, actually, I take that back. I'm not gonna worry about separating them. I'm hoping that I get enough jalapenos to make a small batch, maybe just a couple jars of cowboy candy. And in that, we'll mix the, the milder jalapenos and the spicier jalapenos together and end up with like a mid-level mid spice overall. So I got another handful of shishitos from my variegated shishito plant. I don't know. If you've been following along with me this season, you know I had a shishito plant that came up variegated and it was really cool. I made sure to save some seeds from the first peppers that that plant produced. I let them get fully ripe and red. So these are other peppers from that same plant. These are green peppers, they're immature. So we won't be able to save seeds from these, but I do already have some seeds saved from that plant. So we're gonna try to propagate that next year. Either way, these shishitos will just be for delicious eating. So I've got a couple little bell peppers here. These are not mature size. These are supposed to be golden bell peppers, but at this point it is too late for them to mature. I've got this one over here, which is even tinier. So we're just going to harvest these how they are and use these as green bell peppers. Thank you. 
Now up here in this tangled mess on my deck, I've got a few jalapenos that we're gonna go in and harvest. Just wanna show you guys this beautiful nasturtium. Just appreciate the beauty of that before frost kills it. So kind of all mixed in through here, I've got some jalapenos. I don't have quite as many jalapenos up here as I should because my chickens discovered my deck recently. It was kind of funny. We had these old stairs on our deck that were not incredibly safe, starting to rot a little bit. And the chickens kind of explored them a little bit, but never went up on the deck. And, and a couple weeks ago, Dan replaced the stairs and put in all fresh new stairs. And now all of a sudden the chickens are up on our deck almost every day. It's like now they feel safe to use the stairs, even though, you know, they weigh five or six pounds, little birds. <laughs> but they apparently didn't feel safe with the old stairs. Now that Dan put nice new solid stairs in here, they're up on the deck every day and they have stolen a couple of my jalapenos. You know, chickens can't taste spice, so they're not going to be deterred by something being spicy. So we're gonna go ahead and harvest whatever they've left for us. All right, you can hear the chickens down below. They know that I'm talking about them. They know that I'm taking away their treats. So there's a couple jalapenos. These probably would have grown a a little bit bigger, but we're gonna take what we can get at this point. There's another one here. This one's actually pretty decent sized. Got that one there. Back in here, there's a couple more. So most of my slicer tomatoes in the garden are pretty much done. I've got these black beauties up here. These are a little bit newer plants because I started them from a sucker off another plant in my garden. I'm not going to worry about harvesting those black beauty tomatoes or a few other tomatoes on my garden because they're in pots and since it's only supposed to be cold for about two nights, I'm just going to go ahead and bring those pots inside just for those two nights and then bring them back out. And hopefully we'll have enough time to really ripen those tomatoes right on the plant. We'll see what happens. I've got a few other plants on my deck that'll be coming inside, like this rosemary here. I've got a little clementine tree. I've got a couple of pots of ginger. Those will all be coming inside my house for the winter so I don't have to worry about harvesting those right now. So in here, I've got a cayenne pepper plant. I already harvested the one cayenne pepper that was ripe. As you can see down here, we've got some green ones. Now, I don't really even know. Oh, here's a jalapeno that I missed. Let's grab that guy. Now, I don't really even know what to do with green cayenne peppers. So if you have any suggestions for those, I'm gonna go ahead and harvest these because they're not going to survive the frost. But as I said, if you have any if you have any suggestions for what to do with these green cayennes, let me know, because I'm not sure what to do with them. With the red ones, I usually either dry them for things like fire cider or other herbal medicine, or else I kind of slice them up and mix them in with my pickled jalapenos to give them a little extra heat. So I guess I could probably do that with the green ones too. But if you've got any other better ideas, just go ahead and let me know. So the very last thing I wanna make sure that I definitely harvest today before the frost is basil. So I just brought out a little basket. We're just gonna walk around the garden. I've got basil in lots of different places. So we're just going to grab as much of it as we can. I'm going to bring it in. And then probably what I'm going to do with that basil is freeze it. I have a video, it was one of the first videos that I made, it's from a while ago. So I'll go ahead and link it in the video description where I show what I like to do, my favorite way to preserve herbs. And in that video, I use parsley, but you can do the exact same thing with basil. So I'll go ahead and link that below so you can check it out. And that's probably what we're going to do with all this basil. We're basically, depending on what we are going to use it for, I'll probably preserve some in olive oil and some in chicken broth. But let's go ahead and see what we have for basil. Kind of like every other summer plant in my garden, basil has not been liking the lack of daylight and has not been liking the cold temperatures, especially at night. But we're going to see what little bit of basil we can scavenge up because we want to save every little, every little bit, every little taste of summer that we get to enjoy in winter really counts for something, right? You see, I've got a little basil plant in here. We're gonna go ahead and harvest this. And over here, I think that this is a volunteer holy basil plant. It looks and smells like it to me. I didn't grow any holy basil this year because I was out of seeds and that was one type of seed that I forgot to order. So I would have really appreciated it if that volunteer came up a little bit sooner so I could have actually enjoyed it this year. But we're definitely going to make sure we put holy basil on our seed ordering list for next season's garden. Now, just as a little side note, that parsley back there will be fine with a mild frost. So we're going to leave all that for now. I may end up covering that up when it starts to get a little colder, but for now, that'll be fine.
So there's our final harvest. You see, we got our bowl of tomatoes, added a couple cherry tomatoes to that. This one's got a layer of tomatoes at the bottom, then mostly peppers, some cucumbers, and our whole basket full of mixed basil. So not too bad for a small little end of the season harvest. So thank you guys for hanging out with me in the garden one last time before the frost to get one last little summer hurrah in. And we got the rest, we got the last little bit of the summer's produce. Now we're actually, the frost isn't supposed to be tonight. It's potentially tomorrow night, but I have a really busy day tomorrow. So I wanted to make sure that I get all of this harvested in time. I probably, I'm gonna keep an eye on the forecast. And if it seems like it's definitely going to frost, I'm gonna come out again tomorrow and pick the rest of the, the green cherry tomatoes. I decided to let those be just in case because I can come out and pick those really quickly if it turns out that we are definitely going to have a frost tomorrow night. But I wanted to make sure to get all this other stuff done just in case. So thank you guys for hanging out with me in this kind of little farewell summer harvest. And I think we got some good stuff. So I hope that you guys had a great summer garden and the gardening season's not over. I'm looking forward to the fall garden where we'll, where we'll harvest lots of lettuce and kale and you know, a lot of those like really cold hardy greens. But I hope you guys had a great summer harvest. I hope that you are ready with a fall garden and I hope to see you guys again soon. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.